Gromentum Lab, we're doing all this work and helping you apply, but that's not actually what we're here to do. I mean, we're here to do that now because that's what everybody needs now. But ultimately, what we are is a business incubator for this space. It is an accelerator. It is a 16-week immersive intensive program for you to learn your craft and also learn business concepts. So while, yes, uh, Vince here through the YWCA and Small Business Development Council does have classes and programs and uh, while Sunshine Enterprise does and they are both advisors of ours so we're working very closely with them. We're very unique for the industry of cannabis and the one nice thing about that is that you and your team will be learning alongside nine other teams in different parts of like Mario's talking about the wheel. So you'll have some ancillary companies, you'll have some grow companies, you'll have some infused companies, and you'll be able to work with them and learn at the same time, work with the mentors that we bring. We'll be bringing mentors from all over the different states, this state, different professional services, and also the goal is also access to capital once you graduate. If you need it, maybe you're able to raise the money on your own and that's great, no problem, but that's, what, that's the point of what we're here to do. So we exist because we are an accelerator, because we are a business accelerator. We are providing this service in the meanwhile because we saw that there was a gap. The government created this law, but didn't necessarily create all of the infrastructure and support that you all need to, to get your applications launched. We saw that as an opportunity to help out and to get to know some of you. But ultimately, we'd like you to consider coming to the accelerator to learn more and get some of the entrepreneurship um, and also some of the hands-on work with the plan. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking about applying, et cetera. Yes, Amy, thank you. So you said to them that your program is 16 weeks. It's a 16 week program. But they only have two months, which is probably It's a three month. So, well, no, the application is due like. March. Oh, yeah, you don't get you don't get accepted to the program until after you get your license. I know, and I know it. I need you to explain. So, that to so it. very fair. So, if you are a company that is, well, you're none of those guys because you guys want an infuser or craft grow or transport company. But if what Bruce was talking about in terms of saying, you know what, I could also do something that's ancillary. I want to get into this industry, and I'm not going to be able to get one of these licenses. You might say, I've got a, I've got a, a, an idea for an ancillary company. Great. No matter who you are, if your business requires a license to operate legally, we will need you to get that conditional license before you apply to the accelerator. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to give, well, we will be supported by investors. We owe the investors that they've invested in a sound investment, which means you can legally operate. Mm -hmm. um, if you're ancillary, though, you don't need a legal license. You don't need a license. So we will have the same level of requirements as people who are going, not the same level, not to, we're not going to ask you your security plan if you're an ancillary company because that's ridiculous. But um, we're going to be asking similar questions that are in the license for application for licensed companies. Um, so you can apply at any time as an, accelerate, as, a, as an ancillary business. But I, thank you very much. Thank you for mentioning it. I see Vi here is like, why aren't you? <laughs> Thank you, bye. Um, but we do need to let you know that that's ultimately what we're doing. But yeah. we are certainly partnering with YWCA, Sun Sunshine Enterprises, and the other accelerator or incubators that are in the space. M Hub, Hatchery. If you're in manufacturing, you know M Hub. If you're in food service, you know the Hatchery. We intend to all ultimately partner with those groups as well. Yes. Do you all assist with the application process at all? Excuse me. Do you all assist with the application process at all? The application to our accelerator? No. Assist. What do you mean what we're doing now? Oh, this is assistance. <laughs> but in addition to this, the very last slide on this presentation is what other assistance you can expect. OK? So let's get to that after. All right. Um, so now, what we did is we're going to go really deep, more deep than we've already gotten, into Infuse and into Craft Grow. Not so much on transportation for a reason. We're going to get to that. But because of that, um, what we've done is there are certain things that are common to both areas. And so for starters, we're going to ask 
these guys, and, and tequila really came off like out of nowhere with this. So thank you for being up here. Really, really thank you. Thank you also, Mario, but Mario had some heads up. Um, so basically, um, there are three sections that are specific and new sections in these applications at all that are specific for infuser and for craft grow. Mm -hmm. One is about the suitability of the facility. Mm -hmm. One of them is about the cultivation plan or the infusion plan. And you've got to know what your plan is for those things. And one is product safety and labeling. OK? Fantastic. So those are new areas. Now, there are some parts of those that are common to both Regardless of if you're an infuser or your craft grow, you're going to answer these topics matter to you. You might answer them differently, but the but they're going to be basically common. Then we're going to talk separately. Mario is going to talk first about what's specific about these things to craft grow, and we're going to get into things like lumen and space and all the things that Quantra was just asking about. And then we're going to do the same thing for infuse. And you're going to see that the way you answer it is much more about how you do horticulture as an industry or how you do manufacturing to scale on products for the products that you ingest for infuse those business models look very different which is yes, why we are. separated that you guys want to talk about like the kind of things that are in common mm -hmm. to the What's facility the to your plans and to your uh, safety and labeling so the security with the grow house, right? It's extremely important simply because people will rob your grow house. I've been through it. It's crazy. So you want to put a lot of money into your grow house. A lot of people don't think of this, but I really believe that dogs are a very good part of a security plan for a grow house. Most people don't do that. They think of the electrical, you know, they think of the cameras and they think of the gates and then that's it. But I truly believe that in your business plan, you need to add dogs to that business plan. Guard dogs. You are so welcome. Seriously, these are keys. Well, it wasn't my farm. Um, the farm that I have, we have dogs. Yeah. But the other farm that I was negotiating their contract with the dispensary, yeah. they couldn't. They didn't have any product when I went back because they got broken into because they didn't have any dogs. Yeah. They had fencing, but someone was able. It was actually a trimmer. A trimmer, your, your own staff, <laughs> your own staff will do it to you. So anyway, a trimmer knew the, the process of the schedule and they robbed them. So, and it wasn't a very, it wasn't a very sophisticated warehouse. Um, you know, they were, they were trying to do exactly what they could within their budget. You know what I mean? It was new, it was new to the, to the, to the, to the market. So uh, again, not just cameras, not just you know electrical gates, not just you know privacy gates, but also dogs because they will deter people. Yeah. Really, they will. Yeah. So, so in reference to um, the security measurements, are yeah. there any like um, I guess state requirements or like entries and yeah. safes? And Absolutely, there are. Just like it was with that? the dispensary. You now it's listed on the website. Oh, okay. So you can okay. go there and get that. Okay. But just like it was with the dispensary, all those requirements, it's the same thing. And okay. I think Tom is still here, and he's going to give you a, like a 13 bullet point, I think yeah. it's an outline. He's going to give you that information as well. Yes. My question is with regard to infusion. Yes. Um, with, and I know that Amy mentioned that Mario and some other people had <coughs> options for leasing. These requirements, do they? They will have. Apply so the places that would be available would be basically. Well, no, actually, you're, you're going to have to remediate some of these. No, yeah, for sure. No, really, no. You know, it's not really the same as grow. As a Man, grow so I know what you're asking, and there are two two different answers. So where you prepare your infused product is very different than where you store it, and you do need to, do need to have security for where you store it. And you'll need to create that. You need to create it on paper and in reality. So the next one would be building safety and maintenance during indoor learning dog. Community citizens. So, are so you guys okay with community those first two bullets. Are you guys okay with that? For a lucky security as far as infusers, mm -hmm. um, would you just recommend? I was looking into ADT and everything they bring forth. You probably don't recommend dogs for my factory, do you? So here's the deal. It depends on where your factory is. If you're going to just rent a kitchen, 
like a no, it'll FDA. It'll be a standalone building in Chicago. But then, yes, I recommend dogs. This is the weed industry, you guys. This is the weed industry, okay? Like, this is, we're not making cakes without weed. They got weed in it, and people will steal that versus, I'm being honest with you, people will steal that. You know how many people stole edibles from me? Over $30,000 a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Including edibles. Yeah, they get you high. Edibles get you high, yes. Edibles get you high and you don't smell like it, right? So if somebody's going to really try to steal something and cover up what they're doing, they're going to take edibles. You follow me? So, yeah, you need to have, I don't think you should have a dog inside your kitchen. It is obviously, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, that's what I'm saying, right. It needs to be on the perimeter. If, you're having, if you have a standalone, if you have a standalone building, then, of course, if you want to use ADT, go ahead. I, I use a different company, but. What do you recommend? I'll tell we'll you. Talk later. Yeah, I'll tell you. The point is, I think that if it's a standalone building, yeah. you need to have something that's going to deter people. And you can say, you know, dog on premises. You can yeah. have a sign. You can, no, you know what I mean? In my plan, I have actual security being present. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Which is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Of course, which is a standard. So yeah. that's not anything extra. No. That's 24 right. hour, you know, security. or is security during. I ain't got to hire hours. a dog whisperer, though. Yeah, I mean, you get trained dogs. So I know someone who trained dogs for this specific purpose. Yeah. So you would get those type of dogs. And this, again, I, I stated it when we were talking about crab grow, because people will steal all of your grow. You follow me? The clones and your equipment and all the supplies. So it's not something that a camera is not going to stop somebody from stealing no. from you. And it's a mask. You know what I mean? But a dog will bite the person. So going back to the indoor, I mean, going back to your question, locks and security, if you're cooking different at, at a different location than where you're storing your stuff, then the location where you're storing it should be the one that you have the highest level of security. The location to where you're producing it, if it's an FDA-approved kitchen, I'm not sure if you're doing a community kitchen yes. or whatever, then you don't necessarily, obviously, if you don't own that kitchen that you're renting, you're no because that is an option, just renting the facility, you're not responsible for the security at that facility, and you're cooking the stuff there. You're bringing your supplies, My, and you're preparing it there. As compared Let's, to your uh, own. Okay. What I, what I want to do, what I want to do though, is get away from individual how you're going to set up your yeah. specific business and okay. into stuff that's going to apply to everyone. So, can you, can, um, Mario? You and I talked a lot about extraction. Can you talk about how what? The People. different methods? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, you know, the different methods of extraction. And part of the plan for the easiest ways is using non-volatile methods. Mm -hmm. yeah. So non-volatile methods. You could like, choose volatile methods. You can choose you can. that too, yeah. but it's more... <laughs> more uh, acceptable. It's acceptable. It's acceptable, but it's more... I mean, you need more security. Or not so much security, but I mean just safety regulation as far as hazmats and all that. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. Not me. I, I would be the one to do it. Yeah. 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 So extraction keep going? So yeah, so the, the point of extraction here is you have to really think about what it is you want to ultimately produce. Right. And then therefore, what method of extraction you're gonna to choose to produce that good. And then Therefore, what the requirements of extraction are to keep your place safe yeah. mm -hmm. so that you can ultimately produce that good. So you have to kind of walk it back and break it down into parts. And then your plan has to explain all that. Yep. And if, you're, if what you're creating, maybe what you're creating is like you want to create, you want to use a volatile compound because you're creating something that's totally unique and different than anybody else because it's so hard to do. That might be something you want to do because it's, it's differentiated. Different. Yeah. But then recognize it's all that it's level. like you really got to have a bunch of people that you're working with who can handle yeah. volatility of compounds. Right. And so your place then needs to, your maintenance, your cleanliness has to meet that standard. And, your and I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but that's, that's what your plan would be. And, and that plan can be actually discovered if you've never what, what, if you never visited an infusion location. You can go to the hospital or you can go to a poison control facility and try to talk to people there and learn what the standards are for their facility. You can get their information about how they handle poisonous control at certain facilities so that you can then implement that into your plan if you're going to do such as. If you're going to use butane to make shatter, and that's what she was asking him to talk about, all the different types of extraction. So there's shatter, there's crumble, there's honey. You know all the different forms of concentrate. There are many different ways to get that product from the original state to that. 
That's right. what she's saying. You have to choose the way in which you're going to do it. One that is much more dangerous, where you can actually blow up something and catch on fire, is the butane method. You have to have everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. You even need to talk about the fire departments around you. You need yeah. to make sure you how you're in your, contact with them. You know, that they know what you're, you're working with a bunch of chemists. Yeah, and maybe that makes sense to you. Exactly, and and I have a chemist on tap, and so and that's where it goes back to the employees that you hire mm -hmm. for people who may not have worked in a cannabis industry, but they're chemists. But they're mean chemists, uh, right? or they they're know. They're chemists. They or know a it. Pharmacist, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And so the point is that she was trying to make is with the extraction, you have to make sure you understand the method that you're going to utilize for this, and then describe all of the safety components that will go with it, depending on the method that you choose. And I, this is on this page because you can be doing extraction okay. as an infuser or as a grower. You can, as a grower, you can be selling your proceeds as flour or as extract. And so if you know that you are going to do some extract, you may want to think about, OK, well, I know that I'm going to be supplying tequila. And tequila has a couple things. Like Mario might say, tequila, I want to supply you. And tequila says, OK, well, I need this kind of extract. So Mario's got to figure out how to do that. Now, similarly, and probably in this case, Tequila will just want to buy flour, and she'll want to create her own extract. And so now she's got to have on staff and her equipment and et cetera all the things she needs for her extract. And in that case, Mario is just going to sell her flour. And that's fine. But the point is, is that it's different depending on what? The method. What you're doing, the method that you're going to use. Your knowledge, really. Your knowledge and your level of comfort. If you, I have, obviously, experience with extraction. But if you don't and you're a person who's interested in fusion, stay with that. Don't, don't bite off more than you can chew. You know what I mean? Stay focused. Follow the, follow the steps. Stay focused and follow the steps. Don't try, to, don't try to go big. Do what they're asking. Make sure you get all of those boxes checked. And if something were to change in the future, like we said earlier, then you go back and let them know. You do. Is it, was it the law that that infuser was not allowed to extract from raw materials? I thought that infusers were only allowed to take an extract and infuse it into the actual components of a pastry? This no, is that's not true. This is, not it's true? been, but it, what is true is that it's been um, unclear. And so in one of the previous question sets, it was answered that you can extract in either scenario, environment. Mm -hmm. in either environment, as long as you've, you've stated in your plan that you're planning to do that, okay. and they're clear that. OK, so I think it makes sense to go into the specific areas now. So this is specific to grow. So for a minute, we're going to ask, I mean, certainly Tequila can answer a lot of this too, but Mario's going to be the main person. Same topics, but now what would be specific to growing around what you need in your facility. And it's going to be different than what you need in your f infuser facility. So again, it's going back to equipment that you're going to be choosing, the methods of your grow, and the mediums you use, the nutrients you use, yeah. all the different aspects of growing, period. And that's going to determine your cost of your material and your yields. and. I mean, my eyes are horrible. Sorry. You got the HVAC leak-free. No, yeah. I mean, the building's got to be sound. Your HVAC, your electricity's got to be right. Your setup, I mean, you don't want a bunch of extension cords hanging all over the place. You got to have it strung tight, you know, and hard lined in, three phase, easily or more, you know. It has to all be explained in detail. Right. On, all your stuff. And again, it's going back to how you're going to grow, right? I mean, so that, that actually yeah. speaks really yeah. nicely in terms of what your cultivation plan is. Yeah. Right. Right? Right. They're going to complement each other. I think the cultivation plan is where a person should start yeah. because once you know what you want to do, then all of these questions, your power Easy. supply, you'll know, yeah. you know, you'll figure out how much power supply do I need. And if you don't know, that's when you call one of us because we and have. And it goes back to your square footage. Right? Again, yeah. like the, Actually, the only reason it's in this order is because this is Exhibit A, and this is Exhibit <laughs> D, and this is Exhibit E. That's the only I didn't do that. But in right. your yeah. brain, yeah. in your brain, that's where you should start. You're and right. then you'll be able to go ahead and 
realize what professionals you need. Do I need a person? So obviously you're gonna need an, 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 an electrician and someone who specializes in HVAC. You're gonna need specialists to do that, yep. right? Or you just get a consultant who understands how to do a grow, how to establish it, and they'll, they'll do it for you. <laughs> Mario, what are some different methods for cultivation? When we say methods for cultivation, what do you mean? I mean, you can grow your big plants, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You can grow Caesar green, like those real small dwarfed out plants. You can use di the different mediums. Yep. I mean, there's flooding drains and drip systems, mm -hmm. wick systems. You could set up fish tanks to grow. You know, like right. there's all types of different ways, but. Hydro, right, mm -hmm. and whether you're getting a consultant to tell you, hey, how do you think I should grow this most cost effective way? Or you already know what you're doing, you know your craft and you know what you wanna. Natural right. Not natural if you're using right. Chemicals. The biodynamic feeding. Well, even if you're using chemicals, the state has something to say about what chemicals mm -hmm. you're using. Yes, absolutely. Did you hear her? So for all of those the nutrients who, yeah. that you're using, you know, what type of feeding you're going to be given? Are you oh, using? Right. Even, so for any kind of supplements, pesticides, nutrients, etc., the state has something to say about the level of. Like what they are, if they're if they're organic, they're not organic. Absolutely. And if it was me, I would stay organic. Period. Period. Like. So the point that she just made in regards to what the state is going to, you know, the state has something to say about what nutrients you use and the levels in which you have those nutrients at. You're going to obviously need to have the equipment to test right. your, what these your, nutrients yeah, I mean, are. So you need to learn all of this, right? And you need to explain to them in your plan like how you're going to test your actual plant before right it here. even is done. Testing. Yes. Right here. <laughs> yes. Gotta do that. Uh-huh. Let's um yeah I thought we can test. I thought we have to send it out to the secondary Well you can test and you need an external party to test. Because there's a difference between if you test just to see if you think it's what it needs to be versus an external party is saying, right. Yep, we exactly. tested it and well, they're to distribute it. To distribute it. Yes, yes sir. But I'm saying to grow it because as, as you're growing it you're going to want to make changes to your water, to your light, et cetera. So you're testing it. So the testing that you're yes. doing is your own yes. internal operations testing versus the third party test that allows you to sell it. So you have to test twice. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. This is your testing. I'm not talking and about the third. You should want to. Yeah. Go ahead. So you guys mentioned a little bit about like hiring management to manage those who have this background in cannabis that may kind of be underground. But how do you actually like verify, like to say that you have a team of experts, they've been doing it for 20 years, but they're not legal. Like how, how can we? I can answer that question afterwards. We want to make sure we get through the slide. Yeah, okay. I don't mind answering it later though. Very good. Go ahead. Um, Packaging so, and labeling? Well, we talked a little about cultivation. One of the things you need to do, and I mentioned this before, but how, what percentage of your yield is going to be flour versus what percentage are you going to do in an extract? You have to think about how much you're doing, and that's going to play into your cost structure. That's going to play into your financials at the end and what your revenue is going to be, but you've got to tell them what that is. And if it changes, you need to tell them that it's changed. And also, like, is there a way for me to distribute differently between, like, I'm not going to package ace for uh, an extract company. Like, we, we I could. Sell, I could sell pounds to the extractor, right? I don't have to. Exactly. Right. Have to you'll have yeah. larger quantities, but you'll still need to package it. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Right. I'm saying uh, one pound versus, versus ace. You can do five pound bags. Right. It's, it's all, yeah. It's all put right. Together. Exactly. Yeah, that's it internal, right? You're, you're talking about selling from. Sure we can do it. That's yeah, you can. And that's what she was describing yeah. earlier when she said Mario could take, you know, we could have the scenario of Mario selling his flour to me. I'm not going to take an eighth. I'm going to want a couple of pounds right. of this flour so that I can do my extraction or my well, infusion. I, I guess what I'm saying is I can't just give a dispensary a pound and let them do whatever they have to do. I have to package that. Correct. Or, exactly. When it's a dispensary. Right it's package, yes. Does it got to be packaged for sale? No, it doesn't have to be packaged no. for sale to the dispensary because the right. dispensary will have their own packaging. Right. Exactly. Right. We have to do it. You have to do packaging, but you, you have, have to, to put do it in individual, a bag. Individual, like, individual let's packaging. put it this way. There's two things you could do, and you'll have to make the decision for your business what you want to do. On one hand, you can package a pound, but you have to package it with a label to the dispensary, and the dispensary could decide to roll it, could decide to put it into smaller, whatever, what? or you could decide to package it into smaller with your brand name or joints or whatever you want, want into smaller. 
and sell it to them that way. Right. It's your choice. Oh, you can sell, okay. It's your choice. So you, that's part of your cost structure. It's part of your. That's what. You that's have how to you think raise about. up the price. You have to think to about if it's if, if, if it's already. at that point. Then you'll need to think about the end user. Is it child resistant? Is it all that kind of stuff? Right. Versus if you're selling to somebody with the intention that they repackage it. I'm thinking about cost on packaging. That's the best way. And exactly, exactly. But it also there's a pot potential to mark it up as well. So you have to think about that. Yeah. Um, this goes in, you know, in alignment with, with this question a bit. Now, with the secured um, container, which is required by law, how have you all um, you know, engaged that in the past in your respective states with the actual secured container for transport? You're asking how do we, how do we how secure you, it? You know, yeah, how have you used that in the past and how do you wherever you're from? So we have lock boxes. Okay. Right. Yeah. And don't put a sticker on a car that says... That you're transporting. <laughs> yeah, you know, so you're right. asking, are you asking about transporting? Like, oh, I mean, once it right. goes to the uh, receiver, it's right. theirs to keep. The once it goes to the, once it goes to the receiver, is your lockbox? Yeah, the lockbox. No, it's not necessarily. You, if you want it that way, but no, I we didn't. We don't let them keep our lockboxes. How do you get that back? Is that on the transport company, or do you guys go pick it up? How does that work? We work with the transport company. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Walter. Hi, Walter. I want to know your guys' interpretation. That says the guidelines where they want you to add a minimum of 36 watts per square foot gross canopy or lighting fixtures with <laughs> efficacy over 2.2. So, my interpretation was if we have lighting fixtures with efficacy over 2.2, that we need, mm -hmm. are we allowed to go over the minimum of 36 watts per square foot restriction? Because that or kind of threw me off. It's saying 36 watts per square foot gross canopy or lighting fixtures with efficacy. Honestly, it threw me too, because I read it, and I mean, this is a good point for a so. This is the point it didn't, where it didn't throw me because my brother does the other grow. So, what's his name? Walter. Walter. So I would do the ore because I would get more yield from my plant because you know your plant grows up, but it also grows out. Yeah. You follow me? Right. So if it's gonna, if I can get more, <coughs> then I want more. Mm -hmm. So I would do the or versus limiting myself. Mm -hmm. So that's so that's your interpretation of it. If we have these pictures with efficacy of two point two, I know what I'm gonna get because I've grown before. I know right. that I'll get more yield if I do a different if I do that setting versus the one they gave me. But then you'll have you'll be able to put more uh, fixtures, but your fixtures are gonna be over here. It's not a. It's not a minimum. The minimum wattage is fine. Minimum, not max. Oh, I Min said no more. They don't want any more than thirty-six. Right, but you were saying minimum, so I was going based on what your conversation was. Right. So the or allows you to have more. That's why it exists. Yeah. And by the way, that guy's an electrical engineer. Oh, cool. Well, then you should know. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go over this this max this maximum wattage if you if I have pictures of over two points. Right, and I want to do that because I want more flour. Exactly. So if I do that when I get audited, I think it's you know that's nope because it's written in the legislation. So just as this is an example of what Gromentum is, there is something for everybody to learn about with each other because we all bring totally different amazing skill sets to this discussion and. That's what we're, part of what we're here to do. Um, anything on packaging, labeling? We kind of started talking well, about the that. Packaging and labeling for the uh, for grow. For grow, you. Well, either way, you guys. <laughs> I mean, disposal. So, you you were talking. I mean, Mario and I were talking about all these things, right? Like this is kind of a linear list. You would first need to think about maintenance and product recall and communicating to who downstream needs to know that you've got a recall issue. Then you need to be able to have a, a procedure on bad, uh, how you dispose of bad product. Then you need to also be able to have on-site testing, which is not the kind of testing that's the external party validating that you can sell it. It's just for your own knowledge so that you can make some changes. You have to have a storage. And like Tequila said, your storage maybe is, it's going to be different requirements in your storage than in your grow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Packaging, labeling, what, what, what am I? Should, what I mean, honestly, like got? you said, it's it's outlined there. I mean, through your preventative maintenance on your facility, you're going to be able to catch it 
as it develops, potentially, and then recall and keep in communication. I mean, so you just need to produce all of the details. All these things need to be plans plan. around those bullets there. Really. So M Mario began with the whole idea of your equipment. Your equipment in this is going to be very different than your equipment in Fuse. So you have to show that you're comfortable with farming equipment. Mm -hmm. Also, these regulatory agencies. If you're already a farmer, you know these agencies. If you're not already a farmer, you have to prove your familiarity with them and what their standards are. And everything you're doing not only has to meet the standard of the Cannabis Act, but also the standard that these regulatory bodies have. So if you're creating an extract, and that extract is going to be put in the form of a pill or, the ex or something that's ingestible, you need to look at the American Herbal Product Association, because they're the ones calling the shot on what level that needs to be, you need to be in sync with them. So that's an example of that. All right, so we're going to then quickly move to the next topic, which is about infuser. Same topics, but about infuser. And you see there's a lot more words here, and Tequila hasn't had the opportunity to see this, but. But I'm sharp. It's the same topics, right? Yes. Your space that you get on day one does not is not at the level that it needs to be for an infuser. Mm -hmm. So you need to remediate it, bring it up to that code. That's part of what you need to think about. So you rent a space, maybe you'll have a commercial kitchen, maybe the commercial kitchen will be at the right level. But if you're oh, renting wow. a space that's not a commercial kitchen, you need to make it a commercial kitchen. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So I believe that what you should do is start, if you, if you don't have a standalone build, build, building like this young lady, Go to a facility, for those who are infusing, go to a facility that already exists, right? And then look at several different facilities and try to pick the one that has the most security and the one that has the highest standard of operation yeah. because that's going to be in your business plan. The way they operate is going to actually transfer into your business plan because it's not your facility. You follow me? <laughs> now, if you're, you have your standalone, all you need to do is find out the list of requirements, and then make sure you meet those. For those who don't, you ask, you're going to have that same list of requirements, and you're going to get the facility that's closest to that, and then you're going to talk to the facility owner about the things that you need to adjust within that facility. And that conversation can be dictated within your business plan. Yeah. OK? The next one, consider food grade level or products. Yeah, I, I, that's, to me, that's natural. Because my team consists of not only a cook, but a chef. So, you know, that level of product to me is, you, you, wanna, get, you wanna present with the highest level of product. You wanna show them that you have a, a contract with somebody like I do, like with US Foods. You wanna show them that you have an actual trained professional chef or baker on your team, or a cook with tremendous amount of experience as compared to someone with only like two years of experience. Especially if you're already selling to like Whole Foods, or you're already selling to Costco, or you're selling your product without any cannabis in it somewhere, or you've, you've been cooking for, you want to be able to demonstrate what you've done so that they build the credibility that you, it's just a matter of are you adding some ingredient, but you already have the right standards. So. Okay, power requirement for extraction method and for production. So if you're going to extract, is anybody going to do extraction in here? Okay, good. So if you're going to extract, depending on what way you choose, you just basically have to let them know. It's the same thing from the last slide. So basically, you can do extraction as a craft grower, or you can do extraction as an infuser. Or if you're going for all three, you want to get, you know, do it once and you got it. That's what I would recommend, actually. So when it comes to those who are only doing infusion, you have to explain to them how you're going to do that extraction. And all those safety requirements have to be met here. You have to explain those here. Now, go, can we move on to the next one, the infusion D? The plan, 75? yeah, sure. Yeah. That's, that's, so, that's the meat of it. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions about the other part before we move to the meat of it? I just had a question mm -hmm. uh, real quick. Like, where do you find your child-proof packaging? Like, what companies do you guys prefer? Because there's just like, a lot out there. You sort of have, I think you sort of have to look at it okay. and see what you like. Yeah. Okay. Design wise. Design wise. Okay. And yeah, I think it, it's business. communication because we can package things to where adults can't get into it, but if we don't keep it out of safety of children, right. then what are we doing? Yeah. So it's about educating our consumer. Most of these packets are actually Amy proof. I can't open them. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of time. They're really large. 
but at the end of the day, it's about educating our consumers to keep the things out of the reach of children. Do we put less gunpowder and bullets because kids can get a hold of guns? Okay, guys. No, we hold them, we hold need them to get houses. So I think that we need to... We've got five minutes, huh? We've got so a little we, bit of time to get through. No, we, we have a little bit of time. We're we're done at twelve thirty. We're at t we got t nine minutes left, That's right. and we got to get into some transportation. So so okay. So now let's go through the de demonstrating infused products. So the dosing per individual piece. I kind of mentioned that earlier that you need to be able to have someone who can do you know, calculus to show them. So that's going to be included in your business plan. You pick an item, whether it's a gummy, donut, whatever you make, you pick an item and you explain to them how you do the mathematics for that. So they can understand that you know per piece how much is going to be in, yeah, how much, how many milligrams are going to be in each edible. Okay. And the potency of the milligrams. Right. That's what the milligrams uh, means. Well, yeah. Right, the potency. Well, I mean, it's all. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Do we yes. Need, do we need calculus to do that? You need. Yeah. You need. You need intelligence. Meaning, you need calculus in your brain in order to show. No, you don't need you the, the mathematical <laughs> course calculus. The definition of calculus. You need. No, you I'm talking about. Calculate. You're going to be doing calculus. You need to calculate. You are going to be doing calculus as you do your dosage calculation, right? Yeah. That is calculus, yes. right? So that equation is not, you know, just adding and subtracting. Uh -huh. It turns, it, right. it is One truly. 17% THC. Right. It's truly right. calculus right. because right. you then have to show the decarboxylation portion. Right. You know, you have to demonstrate knowledge of yeah. what happens to your flour when you decarboxylate it. Is it truly that same percentage? So that does take the level of calculus as compared to add, you know, addition and subtraction. You should all have the word decarboxylate if you're an infusion somewhere yeah. in your Multiple application because if you don't know what the word decarboxylate means go look it up that's it's a not really important word. word it's not just the word it's what what it, it means it, yeah and how it affects yeah how it affects your product because you have to know how much milligrams are in each specific dose you follow each me? each little square has x what's that x so tell them what the x is. right so when it says scale products, for so example, when I first started, it was just to my physical therapy patients. I have a medical degree from Northwestern University. So it was just for my physical therapy patients. Once I started to scale, I had to actually do it, right? And it took a lot. So for those who are doing like infusion right now on a small scale, you have to now think, what if I'm serving 200 people in a day, not over a month? Right. In a day, and what you're gonna need, how much you're gonna need to... And then the next question though is, if it is over a month, mm -hmm. the shelf stability of it. Exactly. It's like then that's the other, it's both of them are important. How to keep that shelf life. So, and how to keep the shelf life is not only predicated upon what you put in the item, but how you package it. Package yeah. it. You follow me? So like pastries versus hard candies. Yeah. And like how you can make them the same day, but how they last and how the, the and shelf life. You milk in a box that stays on a shelf. Right. And then exactly. you have milk in the refrigerator. Well, some exactly. pastries are not childproof packaging in the cannabis industry. Right, will so be in that's, Illinois. that's not here. That doesn't apply to us. In Illinois, right? they so will be for sure. They have to Everything be. will be. It has to be. And where can we find those? That's what she asked, right? That's what she asked, and we said we'll address it later. Okay. So just to get through the slides, because like she said, we only have like seven minutes left. Right. Okay? So when it comes to ensuring the consistency and quality standard, you have to obviously explain to them what standards you have for your product, where are you getting your product, how are you keeping it clean, how are you storing it, how are you securing it. You have to explain all of that in detail. What type of package? Yeah, you have to verbalize what type of package it is. You follow me? Yeah. You can also show them a picture inside of your business plan of the packaging that you choose. And if you are wise, you will also get in contact with the company that you're going to buy this product from and then have them even give you a contract and put that inside of your business plan saying, this is the company that I'm going to use, and this is why, blah, 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 blah. Public safety and labeling. Percentage CBD, THC per serving. You have to put that on there. Since it's not a CBD company, which I also have, I've already got that experience of knowing you know, what's required, how to put it on there, how to label it. You guys have to do the same thing. It's much more loose, obviously, because in a dispensary, it's not regulated to the you know, 3%. You can have whatever percentage, right? Up to 100 in the state of Illinois. Right, they don't want you making edibles that are 200 milligrams. <laughs> so you just have to make sure you state that on every single label. Right? Just like the labels you're getting right now with the flower at the dispensary, they tell you exactly what's there. The same thing has to be done with your, and all of that information is gotten from the second testing. Yeah. The second testing, the lab test. You take that and put it right on the label. 
Um, I want to me mention something that Bruce said earlier. Mm -hmm. This is the candy capital of the world. Yeah. More candy was created in Chicago than anything else. I mean, any other. So there's going to be a lot of cheap equipment that's used for sale yeah. that you can use to, so that you can have standard. Every Hershey bar looks like every other Hershey bar. You're going to have to create something that looks the same, that has the same weight, et cetera, et cetera. But you need to be familiar with what the, that equipment is. You need to be equip, f familiar with what that standard is. Wanted to point out the regulatory agencies here again, because you're going to want to be at that level. Um, I'm going to shut this piece down. OK, he's Thank you. leaving. <laughs> Let's move on. Is there any other point here? OK, then we're going to move really quickly into transportation. Or, there, there's a, a sequence of questions here that, you know, Google is your friend. You can look up, if you have really good questions, you look it up, and they'll start to point you to the information you need to know. This is a link that will help you to some of that information for Infusion, so that you're at the right standard for that. Okay, transportation. I, most of the hands that went up had to do with transportation, and a lot of people are gone. Um, none of the information that is required is required specifically for transportation, unlike grow and infuse. It's a little bit easier of an application to do. And that's, but you still do have to have in a business plan, mm -hmm. employee training, record keeping and security, financial disclosure, zoning disclosure. I did not see that you have to have property disclosure. Um, if you've already done a dispensary license, this will be much easier because they are already in place. But you'll need to, instead of demonstrating that your principal owners are really great at dispensing, you have to prove that they're really good at transporting, logistics, that kind of thing. So that's a, a little bit different. But you can take the information that we already have on the web and use it. Here, the information that we talked about today is the same information that you would use for years, but you're just going to do it for transportation and demonstrate your experience in transportation and how it's meaningful in terms of what we're doing. Um, there's nothing that's that different or exciting about transportation that we've already not covered here today. It's just the knowledge that you don't have as high of a bar to cover. OK. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple last things. I sure, yes. What's your name? I'm so sorry. Oh, Jim. Jim. You're Jim Blissett? Yes. All right. With, uh, with BioTrack uh, integration, um, as far as creating that manifest, is that on the actual cultivator, or is it the responsibility of the shipper? I've been, I spoke to BioTrack about it. There's still some confusion as it relates to third party. I think everyone's still under the assumption that you know individuals will be providing their own transport. But for the third party, who's responsible for engaging it or utilizing InfoTrack? Who's responsible for engaging InfoTrack specifically? BioTrack. BioTrack, I'm sorry. Tracking system. That's a good question. That, that's the kind of question. The cultivator has the cultivator. to. Cultivator. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, because we're well, the You ones. might want to just by, anyway, ask this question in the FAQs. I would suggest that you do. Yeah. OK. I OK, um, I mentioned this earlier. Oh, go ahead, bye. And speaking of the FAQs, when people are, are sending in questions, is there going to be a place that everyone will be able to see the here. answers? Here, here. It's here. On every page of this presentation, you have where you're supposed to submit the questions and where you go to get them once they're posted, and the dates. So just look at this presentation for that. I shared with you when you don't need pres we don't need transportation as part of um, your plan. And this is the very last slide, and we really somehow made it. Um, I don't know how after the day that we're having here, but. Um, here are the things you can expect of Gromentum Lab in terms of how we are committed and what we're committed to you while we're going through this. Again, this is before the accelerator ever starts. Support and education and, and navigating this application. That was today, but that will continue as you have one-off questions and we continue to do cons consultation. Number two, as you're trying to organize your work, that's and get all the people who you are working with organized. That's project management. We will give you a template that will help you think it through, but it's up to you to manage it. We're here to support you in what that is. And you can talk to some of the previous SAEs who did this for uh, dispensary in terms of the support we gave them on that. 
Another thing is connection to experts. Some of you are already saying, hey, I want to talk to Mario. Hey, I want to talk to Tequila. Hey, I want to talk to Tom. There are other experts. If you look online in our videos, if you need connection to someone who's an environmentalist, somebody who's an HR person, whatever, we have experts in our group, and we can help get you to them if you need. Next, we talked a little bit about what Mario's doing and Diane's doing in terms of property, leasing, et cetera, et cetera. If you, are, if you need help in terms of showing that you've got a lease, let us know, and we will try to connect you to the right group. Um, <laughs> defraying the cost of application. So some of you are going to find that you just really need an expert to help write a section or a different section. If you just don't have someone on your team who can answer some questions and you just have to get an expert, and that expert we can't find in a pro bono free. If that's the case, you need to let us know. We are trying to get governmental sources for funding to help fund applications. I cannot promise that that is going to happen for sure, but we are working at it, and as we find out that you have needs, we're continuing to advocate for them, and if we can hook you up, we will. Um, but you'll need to let me know what sections, if you've been quoted an amount, who you're talking to. One of the other things we're doing is working with certain <laughs> providers to sort of push the price down so that if we get a whole bunch of people who need help with something, we can kind of get a better deal. So the more of you tell me what sections you need help on it, the more I'd be able to help in that situation if we're able to get funding. Again, not promise, but we're working on that. Um, last time we tried, it did not work. However, last time we tried to provide opportunities for investors who are interested in bringing on a 51% partner. If you find that you want to find you want somebody to take on the lion's share of the cost for all of your business and you're willing to give up 49% because you want to stay a 51% owner as a social equity applicant. We let us know and we will try to find investors. Again, this is not promised. It did not work when we tried to do it before. But we are going to make some changes in how we do things, and we will ask you to provide us some information so that we can do that. So let us know that that's something you're interested in. And then finally, um, at the end, when you get your applications together and you want reviewers who are professional, who have experience in each of these areas, if you let me know in advance, I can get reviewers to review your application for the specific sections that you really think you need review in. So we're happy to help in that way if you need it. Um, going forward, we're only going to communicate to the people who registered for this um, event. So if you're not on our list, you won't hear from us. So let us know for sure if you're not. Um, and then again, stay in touch with us as you need information. And good luck. You're off to the races.